What's up everybody? My name's Jeremy. Some call me the scooter guy here at Rev Rides. Today we're going to go over the ones and twos of basic scooter maintenance, safety gear, and aftermarket accessories that I think are essential. Let's get to it. So let's cover some safety gear that I think everyone should own when out on a ride. Let's talk about helmets. I think they are among the most important item that you should wear when you're riding. The brand I decided to go with was Fly Racing. Due to its lightweight, got nice air vents for the summertime. This is my summer helmet. I do have a more enclosed helmet for the winter. This has a nice field of vision. I think it makes me go faster. I've also got this intercom so I can communicate between my friends when we're on a group ride. Next, we'll talk about gloves. You want to pick a durable glove just in case you fall. It's also nice to have gloves that have a protected palm for when you go down on your hands. I chose these because they match my scooter, yellow and black of course. All right, so next, riding pants. You don't always have to choose to wear riding pants. They are very nice for the winter time because they're wind resistant, water resistant, and they also come with built-in pads. So you don't always have to wear your knee pads with them. These pads are removable if you don't want to wear pads with them. I think another piece of safety gear that's almost as important as a helmet is your knee and shin guards. You're usually gonna fall to your knees if you fall off your PEV. You wanna choose a nice, durable set that will protect your knee at least, if not both knee and shin. These are the Liette Dual Axis, which I love, and they are not even that expensive and totally worth the money. Lastly is my riding boots. Everybody likes to wear their own type of shoe when riding. I prefer riding boots. They offer stability and protection to my toes and ankle when I'm riding down the street. Next, let's cover some upkeep on your device, starting from the top down. So I like to make sure that my handlebars are nice and tight so they don't move around while I'm riding. Same goes with the handlebar grips. You don't want those shifting or moving when you're hauling butt down the road. There are also some screws along the neck that I like to go over every so often and make sure they're nice and tight. We got two up here, two down here. There's one that goes underneath the main, tightens the neck. That's probably your most important bolt to make sure that it's tight. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure that your clamp clamps nice and tight. If it feels like it's too loose when you go to clamp it shut, then you need to tighten up your clamp. I've also had some issues with my fender screws coming undone, so I like to keep an eye on those and make sure they're nice and snug, along with your lug nuts. Not lug nuts, this ain't a vehicle. <laughs> wheel nuts, I guess. <laughs> I also like to make sure that my wheel nuts are nice and tight so your wheel don't go flying off when you're hauling down the road. I like to make sure that my brake pads aren't wearing too thin. You can visually inspect them to make sure that they are thick enough. If you hear noise, grinding, or your brakes aren't working properly, it's probably time to service your brakes. Another thing you might run into is you might need to bleed your brakes. Often, you'll be like, hey, my brake pads are still good, but my brakes are not working. Well, that often will be because your brakes need bled. With mineral oil, there is a kit you can buy online to do this, and it is really easy to do yourself. Every maintenance that you can do on your scooter is simple and easy to do yourself. I also like to keep an eye on my suspension because I have had some of my suspension screws come out, but luckily I caught them in time before I went on a ride. Another important thing to keep your eye on is your tire wear. If your tire is worn way too much, it is easier to run over objects in the road and get a flat tire. Next, let's talk about a subject that nobody wants to talk about, flat tires. A tire change, if you're good at it, should only take you about 15 minutes or so. Let's go over some tools that I like to keep in my bag to help me with my flat tires. First of all, you're gonna wanna keep an extra tube in your pouch. Next, I learned this the hard way, a portable air pump. I got a flat one time, but I didn't have an air pump to put air in the tube. Now I do. Next, your trusty adjustable wrench to get those 
wheel nuts off. Also, your fix-it stick, which you can also find at RevRides.com. It should have every tool necessary to change it flat out. Now that you're safely on the road and you got your gear packed, let's go over some upgrades that I chose for my V-Set. One of my upgrades that I went with and I think is the most important is some high quality durable tires. These are the PMT tires also carried by RevRides. You can find them on our website. They are nice, durable rubber, better profile for street riding. These aren't really off-road, although I have off-roaded with them and they did just fine. No matter what tire you're gonna go with, flats are inevitable. So like I said before, be prepared for flats. Next upgrade I decided to go with is my steering damper. It helps at high speeds to keep those road vibrations from giving you them speed wobbles that will surely make you wipe out and have a bad day. Steering dampers are fully adjustable. You can loosen or tighten the movement of your handlebars just by the simple knob on the top. The next upgrade I went with were these aftermarket headlights. The stock one works just fine, but I wanted a little more light for when I'm cruising, usually on group rides, I like to go on night rides. These you can find online. This handlebar that I mounted them to is like an additional handlebar you can also find online. Next to that, we have my alarm slash aftermarket horn, which is activated by a button up here at the handlebars. You can set an alarm and it's very sensitive, so if anybody touches your scooter, you're gonna know. Also, it's nice for when you gotta alert pedestrians when you're coming up on them, because often your scooter is quiet. You wanna be courteous and let them know that you're coming. Another upgrade I went with, the wide handlebars. For added stability, they are strong and they are very inexpensive. You can also find these online. Also, on these wide handlebars, I have plenty of room for my cell phone holder, which is necessary, and my Insta360 mount to catch those awesome freaking shots. Another upgrade you should also go with is the new upgraded LCD offered by RevRides, which also allows for a better throttle position, more comfortable throttle position. The throttle comes with your new LCD upgrade. I felt that the throttle had too much of a hook on it, so I took about maybe half an inch off of it, and it feels way better to get my finger on and off. Another thing I decided to go with were my awesome LED party lights that I bought offline, and they simply stick on the neck. I also have some on the under deck. These are controlled with the battery pack, as well as my aftermarket headlights. They have their own battery pack, so nothing draws power off this scooter's battery. So now that we covered everything, you can enjoy your electric scooter to the fullest and be safe on the road. Remember, it's always better to be overprepared than underprepared. Please like and follow us for more scooter content. I'll see you out there.